In one of my courses on Udemy, there have been some questions about working with XML data. In a previous video, I talked about how you can convert XML data into an XML DOM and then work with it. Also previously, I talked about recursion and I mentioned that it's ideal for working with a tree structure. In this video, I'm going to go through an example that uses recursion to work with XML data. I think there are some things to learn from this. So that's why I'd like to tackle it. Now, if you missed either of the videos, the one that talked about recursion or the one that talked about XML, working with XML data, you can find links to them in the description section of this video down below. Also in the description section, I've included a link to a list of all the tutorials that we've published at All Things JavaScript if you're interested. Or you could simply go to our channel page as well. So let me jump to Sublime and we'll get started. Now before we start looking at code, let's take a look at the XML file we're going to be working with. This is similar to the XML file which I used in the previous video on working with XML. It's an XML structure that I've used to create online courses in the past. And so the way it's set up is there is a SCO tag and that contains everything in the XML file. And then there is a topics tag which can contain page tags and topic tags. So a page is the data, is the information in a course that will be displayed on the page. A topic is so that we can break the course down into subtopics and those include pages. So as you can see, we start with a page, then we have a topic that contains two pages, another topic that contains a page, and then a subtopic in that, and so on. We have a page at the end. So that's the XML file. Now what I'd like to create are some functions that allow me to work with this XML data. Functions that are going to allow me to grab the first page and then be able to move between pages. So let's set those up. Now, first thing I want to do is create a function that's going to allow me to check to see if the node which I've grabbed from the XML DOM matches a particular tag I'm looking for. For example, as I'm working through the XML DOM, node by node, I want to check to see if that node is a page or a topic or whatever it may be. And so I want to create a function that I will be using with the other couple of functions I'm going to create. And I'm simply going to call it match node. And we'll pass in a node and also a string that we're trying to match. And that string will be looking to see if it matches the node name or basically the tag for that node. So first thing we want to check is if the node is equal to null. That way we're not going to get an error if we pass something in that happens to be null. In that case, we'll simply return the node. Null is the value we're going to use to determine whether we got what we're looking for or not. So if we get null back, then we know we didn't find something. So that's what we'll do first. Second, we'll then check to see if the node name, node name is one of those properties we can work with in the XML DOM, is equal to the string that's passed in. So for example, if I pass in page as a string, we'll check to see if that's equal to page. If so, then we'll simply return it. Else, we'll return null. Because remember, I indicated that we want null to tell us whether we found a value or not. And so I'm going to be using this in the next couple of functions I'm going to create. And those functions will use the recursion. 
Now, the first thing I want to create, the first function I want to create after creating this match node is one that will find the first node. Usually I want to find the first page node because that's going to be the page. Now, that first page node could exist by itself within topics like we see here, or it could be the inside of topics, the first tag we have is a topic tag, and then the first page node would be inside of that. All right, so it could be either case. So I want the function to be able to work for both of those situations. Now, though I'll be using this function mostly for page nodes, I want to create it so that I can use it if I wanted to pull out the first topic node as well. So I don't want to restrict it just to page. So let's start writing that. We're going to pass in the same data, a node, and then the string we're looking for. Now, first thing we want to check is to see if the first child of the node we passed in is not equal to null. Because if it's not equal to null, then we're going to check to see if it matches the name string we passed in. Now, one other thing I need to check for, and I'll explain this in just a minute. I also want to check to see if the first child node type is equal to one. Now, why am I doing that? Well, in the XML DOM, as with the HTML DOM, a node type of one indicates that it is an element node. We don't want to grab a text node when we're doing this. A text node is not what we're after, or a comment node, or any other node we simply want to get an element node. And so therefore we check to see if it's equal to one. That is the node type for element nodes is one. All right, so if all that pans out, then we use our match node function and we pass in the node.firstchild and the string we're looking for. and check to see if that's not equal to null. So if null is not returned on that, then we know we found something. We found something that matches. And so we can return the node.firstchild. Otherwise, if it doesn't match, then what are we going to do? Well, this is where the recursion comes in. If it doesn't match, then we want to return another call to first node, to the first node function. And we're going to pass in the first child of that node. So we're working ourselves our way down the hierarchy, as you can see here. So the first time we go through, we'll pass in the entire XML file. It's not going to find a match here. And so we will next pass in the first child. And then again, until we find what we're looking for. Now we also need to pass along the string we're looking for. All right, I don't need these parentheses around this. All right, one more thing we want to do here is an else clause for this first if statement. If the first child happens to be equal to null or is something else, then we want to simply return null because then we're not able to find what we're after. And so we want to indicate that by returning null. All right, so there we have our first function. Now, what I'd like to do is just take a look at this first function and see what we can get with it before we move on. And to do that, I need to enter the code to parse the XML file. So we have our XML file entered already as a string. 
This is the exact same XML file as I've seen here, but here it is a string, and that's how we, we would receive XML data. So I create a new DOM parser, and then I parse that string. As you can see, it's assigned to XML. I parse that string into an XML DOM, and I pl place that into XML doc, the variable. So once we have that there, then we can take a look at our first node function and see how it's working. A couple things we can do. Let's first find page one. We pass in XML doc and we pass in page as the string we're looking for. Now, let's also see if we can get the first topic. We want to see if this function can allow us to find more than one thing. All right, so there's our first few items we're looking for. Let's go ahead and log those to the console so we can see. All right, let's go ahead and save that. And let's jump out, open the console and refresh. And we've got an error, so let's check that really quick. It's telling me no name is not defined. Also oh, right here, I'm returning the wrong thing. I need to return the node in that case. So save that, refresh, and there we go. We get the first page instructions. As you can see, Right here, that's the first page. And then we get null for the second. The second command we did when we tried to find first topic because topic is not the first accessible node that we have there. It is page. All right, now so we can see how the recursion is working. Let me do something here. I'm going to log to the console, the node, so we can see as we move through this. I'm going to save that, refresh, and let's come up here. So the first thing we get is the entire document, and then we get the scope tag. So let me jump back to the XML file. We have the scope tag, then we should get the topics tag, then it should find the page tag. So the scope tag, here's the topics tag. Sorry, SCO tag with the topics tag inside it. Here's the topics tag. And then here's the page tag. And then down here is where we displayed our console log statement. So you can see as it moves through the different topics, it works its way down that hierarchy. And we do that using recursion because when it doesn't find what we're looking for, we call the function again, but we go to the first child. And so we gradually work our way down that hierarchy. All right, one more function I want to include in here, and that's if I want to find the sibling. So once I found the first page, I need to move through the siblings, but I want to make sure that it's not a topic, that it is a page so I can use it in a course. And so I'm going to paste in this function so you don't have to see me type it out and then I'll describe it. So similar structure, we're passing in a node and a name string that we're going to be looking for. And we set a variable of return node. This is what we're going to be returning and we set that equal to the node next sibling. Now first we check to see if, to make sure that's not equal to null. And if it's not, then we go ahead and check to see if it matches the string we're looking for. And we assign that to the return node variable. Otherwise, we return null. Then we check again based upon this call here. We check again to see if it's not equal to null. If it's not, then we go ahead and return it. It's what we're looking for. For example, if we had passed in page, we go to next sibling. And if next sibling happens to be page as determined by the match node call, then we will return it here. Otherwise, we call sibling node again, and we call it with the next sibling. 
So what this is going to do is it's going to go through the siblings. The first the first node function would go down the hierarchy. It would move down the hierarchy. This is going to go across siblings. So if I pass this page node as the node, it's going to look for this first topic. And if I'm looking for a topic node, it will grab this one. But if I'm not, it will then go to the next sibling and it will look for this topic. That topic's the next sibling. If I'm looking for a page node, then it will go to the next sibling, which happens to be a page node, and it will return it. If that had not been there, it would return a null. So that's what the sibling node function is going to do for us. So I'm doing more than just checking next sibling. I'm also verifying that it's the type of node that I want. And then instead of having to continually check or in a loop check to see if I have what I'm after, I use recursion. This could be accomplished with a loop. But in this case, we're using recursion. We simply call that function again. So let's see how that works out for us. Let's go ahead and try two statements. And I'll paste them in right here. I want to get the next page here and I do that by calling sibling node function and I pass in page one. So this node that I've already retrieved, I pass that in and I want to find its sibling that's a page. And then I'm going to do the same thing and find its sibling that's a topic. And let's go ahead and log those to the console as well. Let me comment out these others so they don't get confusing for us. And I'm going to comment out that one as well so they don't get confusing. Jump out here, refresh. And as you can see, we have page. Let's make sure it's the right one. It's a title of conclusion. If I jump out to the XML file, you can see that the very last page is a conclusion. And that is a sibling of the first page we grabbed. It's not a child. And it's not farther down in the hierarchy. And so I moved across the siblings to find something. And then the one for topic also found a topic and it's lesson one. Let's see if that's the next topic. Yes, it is. And so what I've got here is I've got two functions. I've got first node and sibling node. And I can use these two functions to allow me to move through and grab pages as I navigate through this course. That's, that would be the purpose of this. So I could write another function that would find the next page and I would use the sibling node and the first node to find those. So this is an example of using recursion to work through an XML file. As mentioned, it's not necessary to use recursion. You could use a loop, but I think recursion is cleaner. All right, I hope you found that helpful. If so, please like the video. If you'd like to access other videos from our channel, you can click the video link in the middle of the screen. You can also subscribe to our channel by clicking the circle link on the left. And click the link on the right to access our website, where we include a page of all the tutorials we've published, plus other JavaScript resources. Thanks for watching.